the law of sines, remember there was this possibility of two triangles. Uh, so that was the tricky thing about the law of sines. That was for side side angle. And for the law of cosines, okay, when you when you use the law of cosines and then and then probably the law of sines next, the little trick was if you use the law of sines, you could get a misleading answer. Okay. So the rule we came up with, does anybody remember the rule we came up with for the law of sines? You never Okay, so never use the law of sines to solve in, in, in another way of saying for the <laughs> biggest angle. Never solve the biggest angle by using the law of sines because that biggest angle might be what? Obtuse, it might be obtuse in the law of sine. If you take the inverse sine, you'll never get an obtuse angle. So if it's supposed to be obtuse, it's going to take a lot more work to figure that out if you use the law of sine. If you use the law of cosines, the inverse cosine will give you an obtuse angle. So if it's supposed to be obtuse, it'll give you obtuse. If it's supposed to be acute, it'll give you acute. So the inverse cosine is really useful like that. So never use the law of sines to solve for the biggest angle. That's why you may have, if I circle it, you may have come to get the wrong angle there, like 50. Three point something. So, yeah, be careful with that. Um, let's see. It happens here. Like this is an example of where we would apply that rule. We would never use a lot of signs to solve for the biggest angle. And one way to avoid that would be just to get the biggest angle out of the way at first, use the law of cosines to solve for the biggest angle, and then be done with it, and never have to worry about it again. So which, which uh, angle is the biggest? Uh, B. C would be the biggest. That's the one we want to solve for first. All right, so angle B. Well, when you use the law of cosines, you know we're using the cosine of B, because we're going to have minus 2 times sides A and C, not B, because we're using angle B. Side B is on the other side of the equation. A squared is B squared minus 2AC, sorry, not B. C squared. A squared plus C squared minus 2AC to the cosine of B equals B squared. Okay. Uh, if you think about it, um, just showing you that uh, maybe another idea. When you plug in B, A, and C, and A and C, but not B, you're going to solve for B. Figure out what B is, right? So here's what you're going to wind up doing. You're going to subtract A squared and C squared from both sides. You got B squared minus A squared minus C squared equals this negative 2AC cosine B. Negative 2AC times the cosine of B. How are we going to cancel that two a negative 2AC out? B squared minus A squared minus C squared over negative 2AC equals the cosine of B. Okay, solves for it before you get started. Let me get to plug everything in. So B, side B is 13. Squared minus A, which is 7 squared minus, minus 7 squared minus uh, C9 squared over negative 2 times 7 times 9 equals the cosine of B. So now we're going to figure out what B is, if we know what the cosine of B is. 
inverse cosine. That's exactly what the inverse cosine was built to do. If you know the cosine of the angle, take the inverse cosine of the cosine, and it'll give you the angle. Inverse cosine of the negative 0 0.3095 is approximately 0.3. one decimal place, 108 degrees. So I solve for B, and let's just review, why did I solve for B, as opposed to A or C? So B is the angle across from the longest side, so it must be the longest, or the largest angle. So why did I choose the largest angle? So you can find other angles. Well, I definitely want to find an angle so I can find another angle so I can find another angle. But why did I solve for the biggest angle and not a smaller angle? Because of the sine, and you don't know if it'd be obtuse or not. So if I, I, I just want to avoid using the law of sines to solve for what could be obtuse. Turns out there was obtuse, so that would have been bad to solve for that angle with the law of sines. From there, now we know angle B. So you know angle B, side B, and uh, Angle B side B side A and side C. So set up the sine of, it doesn't matter, A, let's go with A. Sine of A over 7 equals the sine of 108.03 degrees over 13. Sine of A equals 7 times the sine of. Inverse sine of that number. This and this from 180. Make sure they all add up to 180. Clear it up? Yes? No? Is it good? It's pretty neat. Any questions? find the length of this side. Okay. And we got a right triangle. That's very nice. It was uh, back, back in the simple days of right triangles where the sine was just the opposite of the hypotenuse, cosine was the adjacent of the hypotenuse, and so on. So we got a couple things that we know, one thing that we don't know, and it would be great to throw them into equation together so that one of them was an unknown that we could solve for algebraically. So, how, what equation can we set up with those three things? Uh, the sine. The sine. Of 36. Of 36. Equals. Yes. A, A over 12. Let's check. Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. That's the opposite side from 36. That's the hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. And good. What's that? Multiply by 12. Multiply by 12. 12 over 1. By 12. So it's 12 times the sine of 36. Sine of 36 7.05. Pretty basic algebraic principle. Set up an equation where the thing that you don't know is. Uh, 
a variable, like an unknown value, and then use uh, multi on both sides of the same thing, add on both sides of the same thing, figure out what the thing is that you don't know. Why is that hmm? 12 because the hypotenuse is 12, oh. and the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Questions? I did um, A over sine of 36 equals 12 over sine of 90. Oh, you did the law of sine? Yep, that works just fine. They came out the same, right? Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, when you do that, um, so A over the sine of 36, fine, equals uh, 12 over the sine of 90. Now, what's the sine of 90? Is one, okay. so I just got 12, 12 divided by one here. Right. So, yeah, absolutely, it works. Um, and then on, on both sides, you multiply by the sine of thirty-six, and wind up exactly with that. But if we realize that oh, it's a right triangle, and you know we don't need this extra bit, then uh, it can save us, you know, precious seconds. Uh, so we know two sides, and we want to find. Angle, of course, we could um, use, a lot, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the other side if we wanted to. Uh, and if you did that, that's fine. But for for my purposes, let's just stay with this angle that we want to know. This these two sides. Can we set up an equation that involves theta, five, and seven? What equation can we set up? Tangent. Tangent. Tangent of what? Theta. Of theta. Five over. Opposite over adjacent. That was good. Right. How are we going to get theta by itself? Uh, divide by or multiply. No. Of what? Five <laughs> <laughs> multiply by the reciprocal of five sevenths. We'll get. Seven over five. Like we're bringing more things out of the side. I don't know. I don't know. Do the inverse anyway. tangent. It's not to, to poke fun at anybody, it's just that, oh, that's not an uncommon thing to do. But if you think about it, we're bringing, we're bringing more things over to the thing that we want to isolate, right? We want to get the, the uh, theta by itself. Divide by the theta. Divide by what? Theta. <laughs> <laughs> Divide by the theta. Stop. If I had an equation like 2x equals 17, and I divide it by 2, why? 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 Am I dividing by two? To get x by itself. Mm, no. Why am I dividing by two? Cancel out what? Two. Cancel out this two. That is being multiplied. Oh, if somebody said that, I just didn't hear it. Multiplied by x, and division is the inverse of multiplication. We're not dividing by two because there's a two next to the x. <laughs> So we don't divide by tangent. It's not tangent times theta. I don't even know what that would mean. Right. Tangent means nothing by itself. Just like this means nothing by itself. And when I have the square root of x, I don't divide by the square root. Right? Yeah. Dividing is not always the answer, just because it's right next to something. <laughs> Only when they're right next to you implies that there's multiplication. How do we undo the tangent? We do the inverse of tangent, just like we do the inverse of multiplication. Inverse of tangent. Inverse of tangent on both sides. So theta equals inverse tangent of 5 sevenths. 35.54. Oh, I have that too. We have a triangle that's not a right triangle. A non right triangle. We want to solve for B, side B. What equation can we set up when we have a non right triangle? Solve for that side. Kayla, you just look like you really want to say it. Well, Uh, 
Why is this the longest side length? Tell me because it looks like it. Right? Huh? Not because it looks like it. You wouldn't okay, think that. Don't say anything. Right? Except two. We don't know. We don't know. Did I, did I get out my protractor and my ruler to make sure I drew all these? No, yeah. of course I didn't. <laughs> that would be a waste of time. All I need to tell you, I'm just giving you a reference of where everything is, not how big everything is by looking at it. And if anything, this would be the longest side from what I've drawn, from what it looks like. True. And certainly, this angle looks bigger than this angle. So why would this one be 50? It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's what I say the sizes are. <laughs> okay? Well, it's weird. And you should fix it. Well, <laughs> uh, it's just like drawing a diagram of anything. I mean, like, if you just switch the 15 and 40, like, it would have made more sense. Feel free. But either way, you do when you When you draw to do that, but realize that, yeah, oh God. it only matters what the numbers that I put there. Uh, just do the law signs. Yeah, let's, let's just do it. It's like 300 degrees. B over, over sign of 15, 15 there you go. Equals, equals 34 over sign. Okay, so multiply with the side of 15 on both sides, you get this B equals 34 times, times the sine of 15 over the sine of 48. That's looking what does B equal? Oh, that is 34. 11 times 84. Sense. This side shouldn't be bigger than 34. It should actually be quite a bit smaller than 34 because this angle is quite a bit bigger than 15. About uh, three times bigger. Okay. So 11, I believe. I believe it. I believe that side would be 11. Point eight four. Did I get that right? No, you didn't do it. Again, maybe in radian mode. Well, maybe see rounds up. Maybe mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that what, so eleven point no eight. Oh. I don't know how we got point seven instead of point eight. Uh, they might have rounded off. <laughs> Pretty off. Awesome. Kevin, yeah, uh, if you rounded like. wrong, you got some problems. <laughs> Find the measure of angle. Well, B. Hey. Your B's gone. Yeah. It's in the top one. Okay. I chose B because it's probably the best idea to solve for that angle because that angle is the biggest, the biggest angle. You don't want, you want to just want to avoid using a lot of signs to solve for the biggest angle. So we'll start out solving for B. Okay. So we got the cosine of B, and we got A times C, negative two times all that stuff. A squared plus C squared. Oh, that's equal to B squared. B squared minus A squared minus C squared over negative 2 AC equals the cosine of B. Or don't do it that way, do it however you want, as long as we arrive at the same conclusion. Uh, 12 squared minus A. Does it matter which one's A? No. no. It doesn't, doesn't matter. No. 5 squared minus 9 squared over negative 2 times 5. Nine cosine of B. One forty four minus twenty five minus eighty one. Thirty eight over negative ninety, which is Cosine of B. Oh, Jesus. How do we find B? Use the inverse, inverse cosine. cosine. 
Many twos as you can manage to press until your thumb gets tired. Fourteen point nine seven. 